Welcome to another edition of In the Garden. Today we're out here and it's about 45 degrees. Just a couple days ago it was close to 80. Well, go figure here in New Jersey. That's generally what happens. Isn't that right, Chris? Yes! <laughs> Anyhow, today we're here to talk about hardening off your seedlings that you started inside. What's it all about? We'll have that and more answers right after this. Have you ever started seedlings in the house under a grow light and you find that when you put them outside in the garden, they die right off? There's a reason for that. Your seedlings need to be what's known as hardened off. And I'll explain that in detail. These seedlings that you see right now on my back deck are in the middle of getting hardened off and there's a lot of misunderstanding about what hardening off actually is a lot of people are under the misconception that it has to do with temperature only and actually the temperature really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it it's mostly direct sunlight that you have to worry about and the way it is is the Sun will cause more damage direct sunlight that is to your seedlings than the cooler temperatures actually will unless it's a killer frost but what you have to do is several steps prior to putting the vegetables seedlings out at night now I never suggest putting cold weather crops those never start inside you should be putting them directly in the garden for instance uh, sugar snap peas and the uh, early winter peas, I put them right in the garden. If there's snow on the ground, you scrape the snow back and just put them right in the ground. You'll be surprised. I literally had about an inch of snow, and when the snow melted, there were seedlings from the peas poking out of the snow. So they can take pretty cool temperatures and still survive. Same thing with the carrots. When you put carrots in, I've sprinkled them right on the snow itself and you let them come up when they want. And same with romaine and a lot of the lettuce crops that are cold weather crops. I just sprinkle them right on the garden and let them come up when they want, when it's cold out. And I always like to start them real early in the spring and you beat all those insects. That's the important aspect of starting the garden early in the spring. You, you get to a head start before the insects actually have come out. But back to uh, hardening off. It's not a fast process, and it's something that takes usually a couple weeks to do. And what you want to do is bring your plants out. It's ideal if you have a cloudy day then you can start bringing your plants out and let them stay out for longer periods on cloudy days. But days with direct sunlight, what you're going to have to do is put them out for a couple hours, three at the most, and then bring them back into your house uh, in the shade, obviously. You don't want them in the direct sunlight. And you have to do this, alternate it a couple times a day put them out for th two to three hours, bring them back in for another couple hours, and then put them back out for another hour in the afternoon sun or, or whatever. And then you do this for uh, a couple weeks and then you'll have a, a better success rate. If you have a cloudy day with a little bit of light rain, leave them out all day and that'll help them get acclimated. In that shot, you see the uh, giant pumpkins on the right-hand side. We started those, uh, I think it was actually Liam, uh, in our starting seed video, with our Kids in the Garden, Liam actually planted those, and then um, we transplanted them with Mason uh, into the bigger peat cups. And you notice that I have the uh, big plastic bins 
I always buy them. We always start our seeds with the clear tops. And I'll tell you why, it, it has worked perfectly. And I've had great success using them. I start the seeds in it on a seat mat, on a, a heat mat in those bins with the lids on it. It keeps all the moisture in and it, it's like a mini terrarium. What a great way to start your plants in. And I just use the peat pots and uh, a lot of times I'll plant the seeds uh, like we did in the seed starting video directly in the peat pots. That way there is no transplant shock whatsoever. <clears throat> and it's like a, a mini greenhouse, uh, so to speak. And uh, here in my back deck, uh, it drives everybody wild that uh, they can't sit down because I always have seedlings uh, <laughs> hardening off in the, in the back deck area. But uh, I, I always have the strongest, earliest peppers and tomatoes. In fact, this year, most of my tomatoes and peppers are going to be in those 10 gallon grow bags that uh, you just saw the video before. Those things are outstanding and I, I'm sure that you got that from that last video. And uh, <clears throat> last year I bought a, a pack of 10 and I have a, a nice, you know, garden area, raised beds, but you always want to add more and more plants and the problem is you can overcrowd. But with these grow bags, you can throw them everywhere you have a little bit of space. <clears throat> For instance, uh, I'll fill up this deck area with uh, grow bags. I'll put peppers and of course tomatoes. Tomatoes love those grow bags. And those grow bags actually generate a little bit of heat. And that's why I tell you, make sure that you use plenty of peat moss and potting soil. And you can see my little squirrel friend, he always uh, is, is begging for peanuts and he'll actually take them out of your hand. Uh, Try to get him on a camera a couple times, but he's a little camera shy. And uh, here's a shot of uh, <clears throat> the seedlings that Liam started. And you can see the pumpkins prior to us actually transferring them to those bigger peat pots. But uh, we're going to try them out. They're supposed to grow up to be at least six to seven hundred pounds, which <laughs> I'm probably going to have to move them around with a tractor if uh, they turn out the way they are supposed to. And uh, you'll see the cucumbers in the tall bin. And <clears throat> this week, the temperatures uh, are supposed to change from the mid 40s up to the 50s. Once the nighttime temperatures hit 50 degrees, then it's safe to put all your vegetables in your garden. Uh, most of the time around Mother's Day, when the temperatures reach 50 degrees, then you know it's safe and uh, the possibility of frost uh, isn't that great. Uh, although it can uh, happen and uh, make sure that you have some uh, lightweight grow cloth that if frost is expected, you just throw it over whatever you planted in your garden and uh, it should protect them. The main takeaway from this video is to properly harden off your plants. Don't worry, if you don't do it properly, your plants are going to let you know. They're either going to be so stressed out that they're not going to produce as much vegetables as they normally would, or they'll simply die off. You'll be the first to know actually second to know, your plants will know first. And if you live in New Jersey, this week is gonna kick off the overnight temperatures at 50 degrees. That's the optimum temperature that you can plant vegetables outside full time. Anything less than 50 degrees, you wanna wait until the temperature goes up to at least 50. Hope everybody learned something today and had a great time. And I know I had a great time putting this video together for you. And it was a little out of sorts than we normally do, but hopefully you learned something. I know I did. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see everybody in the garden. Good gardening, everybody. And if you like this video, please subscribe and feel free to share. Thanks, everybody.